So we haven't modified the commit multi enlistment transaction .c file yet, but we're going to basically set a breakpoint on the different functions. And we're going to continue execution. So we're going to build the actual sample unmodified at the moment. So it's been copied on the target VM. And we're going to run it. You see it gives us the instructions and then it, we need to hit enter to execute the rest. You can see it stops and because the, the VM is in a block states due to the breakpoint being hit in the debugger. So we see it hits the create enlistment because obviously the two enlistment has been created. So we can continue execution. It hits a second time for the second enlistment. And then it goes into pre prepare complete ext, which is due to the fact that pre prepare complete is called in New Zealand. But we can see in the actual VM that we got notification for different states. The fact that when we read the, the grid first for the two enlistment, we have B5 and B6, two different grid. And then when we read the actual queue, we got the pre prepare state already. So we're going to continue execution. It's going to hit the TMP pre prepare complete X for the second enlistment, and then nothing else because we haven't added the, the other APIs. And on the target VM, we see that it went from the pre prepare state to the prepared state. And if we hit a key, nothing happens because we haven't executed the prepare complete and the commit complete functions yet. It's telling us that the transaction has been committed, but it's probably not the case. So we see that we haven't hit the commit complete and prepare complete functions yet. So we are going to add code to go from the pre-prepared to the prepared state and then from the prepared state to the committed state. So we're going to use code similar to the one that we provide, which is basically to call prepare complete for both enlistments, show that we have moved to the prepared state, and then we're going to read the notification to see what happened. So we moved from, we see, we hit a key to call prepare complete, and now we're going to hit a key to call commit complete. And after we have called commit complete, there is code already to show the notification. Okay, the code looks valid. Let's test it now. So we're gonna push the code onto the target VM and we're gonna run it. So we hit a key, it triggers our breakpoint. We see it calls create enlistment once. The second time it calls pre prepare complete X. Then it calls pre prepare complete X for the second enlistment. Then it doesn't do anything because Actually, it's blocked in New Zealand on hit a key to continue. We have the same state as before with the two enlistment having different grid and the prepared state being reached. So now we're going to hit a key again. We're blocking again. So here again, we see that we hit the TM prepare complete instead of the pre prepare complete because of the change of states. We hit that for possibly the first enlistment, the second, and then again, nothing else. It's because again, it's blocked. In New Zealand, we can see that after reading the queue, we actually got a new notification related to the transaction notify commit. And we're going to hit another key to call commit complete. Again, we see in kernel, we hit tm commit complete x and a second time for the second enlistment and then nothing else. And in New Zealand, we see that we assume the transaction is committed and we don't read anything from the queue. Okay, so it looks valid from the user end perspective. Now we can debug it in kernel and analyze the structures. Before we actually debug the actual functions and see the structures in kernel, I just want to quickly show that I actually renamed variables and function prototypes in the different functions we hit, just to make it clearer what is happening. We execute the binary, we hit the tm create enlistment. Tm create enlistment is not actually defined. However, if we look at the backtrace, we see that it's called by NT create enlistment X. And so if we go on TM create enlistment and look for references, 
we can see that it's actually called from NT create an instance. And this function, we've seen it in a previous lab. So we have defined the prototype because this function is defined, right? So we know the arguments. So we can basically define the prototype, at least the name of the argument of the tm create an enlistment function, because we know we have defined the names. So going here and edit function prototype, we can actually define all the names which I've done already. So then when we analyze this function, we have the actual variables and we can actually rename things in this function because everything propagates. If we look at the backtrace again, we see that it's called from create enlistment in New Zealand. It's called the syscall nt create enlistment and then tm create enlistment. And we've done the same for all the other calls. So for instance, for tm pre prepare complete x, the same thing, references tm pre prepare complete. We look at the backtrace. We see that it's actually from username we call pre prepare complete, which called the syscall nt pre prepare complete, which ended up calling tm pre prepare complete x in kernel. So again, if we look for where it's called, we have nt pre prepare complete, which we can define because we know that function because it's defined publicly. So we can define the arguments of this function. So in this case, actually, there is one more which I had to, to figure out, which, has, which is an access mode, which I figured out because this function takes an access mode as the fourth parameter, one, two, three, four. By propagating it into the arguments, because the one publicly shown is different from the one we have in our binary. And then I was able to know that, okay, it's passing an enlistment object as well as a TM virtual clock to TM pre prepared complete. And then I can see here, here it's a function. So actually I call that callback func. And so we have something similar for the other functions like tm prepare complete x, something similar, and for tm commit complete x, which we can hit by hitting enter and entering the commit complete function call. So just to show you that actually renaming things will help when we try to understand what is happening. So now let's debug our binary. We have our four breakpoints set in the kernel. We are going to start the binary. It is waiting for us to enter a key. We hit a key and we reach our first breakpoint. So we are in tm create enlistment. We're going to set a breakpoint on the tm initialize enlistment function call. So we're going to use f2 in this case because we've already used the four breakpoints that are available on the hardware side. So we're going to use f2. It's going to set the breakpoint with the BP instruction. So we hit that breakpoint. We know the first argument is our enlistment. So we can see it's not initialized yet. So we're going to step over. I'll use P and I'm going to print it again. So here we see the cookie is initialized, the GUID and with DE46. There is no other enlistment into the same transaction. It links to the resource manager and the transaction. I'm going to also print the transaction. So the transaction has the cookie as well and it's currently active. The enlistment list only has one enlistment. The count is one and the list has two pointers pointing to the same value because only one of them. And, and it's currently in the outcome undetermined. And for the enlistment, we see it's active. The notification mask is the one we provided from username. Okay, so now we continue execution. We're going to hit the create enlistment a second time. So we're going to continue execution until it actually initializes the enlistment. Again, in RCX, we have the second enlistment. So we're going to print the enlistment a second time. It's not going to be filled yet. It's not actually valid yet. So we're going to step over. And now if we print it again, We actually see that it has a valid cookie, the GUID end with DE47, and the previous one ended with DE46. 
for the enlistment. So we have 46 and 47. Now we see that actually there are two different pointers. We see as well that the transaction is 1330 and for the other one the transaction was 1330 so when we print it but it's actually the same transaction for the previous enlistment. So both enlistments are part of the same transaction and if we actually print the transaction we now see that enlistment head has two different pointers and the enlistment count is two. So the transaction has two enlistment inside it, which is exactly what we wanted. So the outcome is the same. So we're gonna continue execution. So now we hit the TM pre paper complete X. If we check in New Zealand, we can see that actually it received notification about the pre paper state. So if we go inside that function, we know that the argument is an enlistment object. So if we look back, our first enlistment was the 6710 for the address and the second one is 6720 on a different, completely different address. But basically 6710 is the first one. So if we print 6710, now we see it's actually in the state pre preparing But if we look at the second one, the state is pre preparing as well. So both are in the same state. Now let's actually step over that and see what happens. We're gonna execute the whole thing and we know this function is going to be called a second time for the second enlistment. So what happens is that if we look at the first enlistment that has been pre-prepared complete, we see that now the first enlistment is in the k enlistment Pre prepared. The second enlistment is actually in the pre preparing state. So the previous enlistment is already in the pre prepared state. So actually calling pre prepare complete on the first enlistment actually changes state. Okay, let's continue execution. Now we are stuck in New Zealand because both pre prepare complete have been called. So if we break in the debugger and again print the first and second enlistment, if we look at both enlistments, this one is preparing and this one is preparing. So they are both moved to the preparing state. Now we're going to continue execution in New Zealand by hitting enter and we call the prepare complete X function. So if we look again at both enlistments, the first one and the second one, we see that preparing and preparing, they are both in the same state. So we're going to continue execution. We hit the same function again. And if we look at the first enlistment again, it's changed to prepared state. And when the second one is called and we check again, the second one, it has changed to committed notify as well as the first one has changed to committed notify. So basically because both enlistments have evolved, they both change to the next state. And if we look at the actual notification in New Zealand, we can see that they both got the notify commit notification received. So now we can hit a key to continue and we see we hit the tm commit complete x function. And again, very similar code with function callbacks. And if we look again at the enlistment, we have committed notify still and committed notify. So one thing we could do here is actually look at the transaction. And we can see the transaction actually changed to outcome committed. So we are in the commit complete function call. We're going to continue execution. Hit it the second time. It's still, ah, outcome committed still. And the enlistments are both in the committed state. and committed notify. So now they tell us that the transaction should be committed and we need to hit enter to exit. But if we go back and look at the actual states, we have committed for both enlistments and the transaction as well is committed. So there is one last thing I wanna check is the actual state of the transaction over time. So if we execute the binary again, we're gonna hit that function. So we're gonna set a breakpoint 
but actually the breakpoints for when the enlistment is created is already defined, so it's going to be hitting. So we're going to just look at the first enlistment and I'm interested in the actual transaction. So we're going to step over and now it has defined the transaction. So you can see here the outcome is under undetermined. So I'm just going to continue and look at the transaction, see the undetermined. So now it's hitting the TM create enlistment. So we see it hasn't changed. So it's going to call the pre prepare complete function. And for the first enlistment, so once the first enlistment has changed to the pre prepared state, the transaction is still the same state. But now if the second enlistment goes into the same state, now both have changed the preparing state, if we look at the transaction, it's still undetermined. And if we look at the information, however, we see that the transaction is preparing now, but it has evolved. So if we continue execution, hit enter to call prepare complete. The enlistment is still preparing. The transaction is still preparing. Now, one enlistment has changed to prepared. The transaction is still preparing and it's because basically the second enlistment hasn't changed to prepare yet because we are actually calling prepare complete for the second enlistment now. So I'm just going to continue execution to do it for the second enlistment and now that both enlistments have done it, if we check again the transaction, we see that it has changed the committed and the enlistment is in the committed 35. So basically, for a transaction to change state, we need every single enlistment that is part of this transaction to change state as well, which is what we are seeing in the debugger, which is exactly what we needed to confirm. Okay, thank you for watching.